Okay, so I'm here with Chef Skinner at Coco Palm Hotel and uh, he's just cooked us a fantastic three-course meal. Um, so, Chef Skinner, tell us what was in this meal. It was amazing. Well, actually, um, I had to put my, 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 my skill to task this morning because when I came, I didn't realize I had to cook for you all. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so Bit most of a surprise. Of, yeah, most of it was a, a sort of a on-the-spot kind of creation. Um, but I think um, what I'm true to is uh, Caribbean flavors. And so whatever you, whatever dish you, you might see me create is, is guaranteed to find a lot of Caribbean kind of flair and, mm -hmm. and, and certainly the flavors of the Caribbean. And this morning what I prepared for you all was one of the dishes that are very popular in the restaurant actually, voted by the people of course, not mm -hmm. by myself. Sure. It's uh, orange and ginger glazed red snapper uh -huh. and it's served on a breadfruit and saltfish ball mm -hmm. and it has a really nice tamarind glaze that goes around it. So that is one of our really, really popular dishes. I mean, a lot of people who come to the restaurant, they always go crazy over the station. They want the, 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 the uh, recipe and so on and so on. So yeah. um, I decided I would do that for you all this morning. And the appetizers was a kind of a sampling of three different items. The first one on the plate was uh, saltfish and what we do, like a Creole saltfish. Mm -hmm. In Trinidad, we call it a saltfish bulljol. In St. Lucia, they just call it saltfish or Creole saltfish. Uh -huh. And it was wrapped in a, a fried uh, plantain sliver. Right. And at the bottom of it had a Creole tomato sauce. Yeah. Uh, in the other part of the dish, there was a, um, a pumpkin soup, which is another popular famous dish here. Mm -hmm. And it was topped with a tamarind glazed uh, um, shrimp. That is one of our other signature dish, I would say. Yeah. And the third one was... Um, chicken one with Oh, yeah, that was the roti. Yeah. So I'm from Trinidad, so uh -huh. I always tend to bring some of my Trinidad influence into my cuisine as well. And roti happens to be one of the traditional dish of Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So in that one, we had a mini roti, mm -hmm. and basically I had a little pumpkin choker with that as well. And that was the first appetizer. Nice. Yeah. Well, it was very, very tasty. Uh, tell us about the desserts. We had a the selection dessert. of desserts. Um, again, I chose some of the dishes that are very popular here. So I did, there's an Oreo cookie um, uh, cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That was one of them. And then I did a caramelized uh, banana. Mm -hmm. And on the side of it had a chocolate fondant cake. Yeah. So, you know, I, I like the balance of all three of them. And then I had some uh, vanilla ice cream in the middle just to give it that kind of a cool... Uh, saucy kind of balance to everything else. Nice, yeah. perfect in this heat. Good, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> well, I have to say, it was a fantastic meal considering you didn't know we were coming. I, I so trust great. me, I, I had to, I had to, you all had me on the spot, but I, you know, I, I'm accustomed to it, so I just got into it and yeah. did what I do best, you know. Creative flair. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> so do you cook these kind of things on a daily basis for guests? Um, I, I have a, let me give my, my team some credit. Uh -huh. Um, when I when I introduce a menu, I, I think I think in the initial stage is, is where I really have the, the bulk of my work, where I have to train them to understand what's in my head. Because mm -hmm. when I create a menu, obviously they wouldn't understand exactly what I want to put onto the plate. Yeah. So I would do like maybe about three months, four months, in which I would do some really intense training with my staff, mm -hmm. and then um, basically I could just step back and watch things happen. Yeah. Whenever I have people like you all come in, that's when I get into the kitchen. <laughs> and if I have right. any special groups and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? yeah sure. That's when I get into the kitchen. But other than that, I, I, I have a really good team, mm -hmm. and I just basically manage them. That's Fantastic. Yeah. Great. And everything is all sourced locally and inspired by local cuisine. Correct, correct. I mean, uh, I'll be fair. We, we use we use as much as possible local ingredients that we could find. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, because of the demand in St. Lucia, sometimes we have to use some imported items. But even the important items that we bring in, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically going to relate somehow or the other to Caribbean thing. Because I stick to Caribbean ingredients. That's what I feel. I feel I'm good at that. So yeah, I tend to stick Absolutely. to that. Yeah. Great. Okay, so for you, if you had one dish, what is your one favorite dish? Wow, people always ask me what's my favorite dish, but I think it's, it's kind of unfair to see that I have a favorite dish because I think every dish that I put on my menu is somewhat favorite to me. That might sound a little bit complicated, but um, I only put items on my menu that I personally love. And so to answer that question, I think what I could say is I'll just go with what the people tell me is the best. Sure. And very often we have three dishes right now on my menu that is really, really kind of ranking. Mm -hmm. 
because mm -hmm. um, we always get high reviews on it. And, and, and number one is the orange and ginger glazed red snapper. Mm -hmm. The other one is the pumpkin soup with the caramelized shrimp. Mm -hmm. And the third one is our breeze Caribbean lamb shank. Nice. And, and those are the dishes that really always tend to get really, really high ratings. Yeah. Great. People. And we tasted two of those today. Yeah, yeah, and I can great. say that they are high ranking, <laughs> very good dishes. Good, good. Happy, happy to hear that. <laughs> great. Yeah. And just in a general sense, um, for you living here in St. Lucia, uh, what, what are the things that you would recommend people to do or see? Or what is a one, the one must-see thing before people go home? Well, what is very famous in St. Lucia is the piton. So mm -hmm. that is one of the things that we, 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 we tend to always say to our clients. They should go and see before they go back. Um, the, we have a tour desk here that offers a lot of tours. Mm -hmm. um, we also have you know, a company that is linked with the restaurant and uh, it's called Carnival Sailing. Mm -hmm. And they have an array of different tours that they do as well. And part of it is going down to the Piton. They have a sunset cruise. Uh, they have a, a party on the, on the beach and, and, and a whole bunch of different things happening. Yeah. So um, definitely you must go to the, the Piton. Yeah. And the Sulphur Spring is one of my favorite attractions, in my opinion. Because so it's kind of piece of, it's, to me, it's like a part of nature, you know? Yeah. A, a piece of nature that you see actually alive. Because yeah. you get there and then you see all the sulfur just bubbling and so forth. It, it's not something you see very often. And I think it's, it's very unique in St. Lucia in a sense to go and see that, that live volcano actually bubbling all the sulfur and so forth. Yeah. So um, I think that is one, to me, my favorite attraction on the island. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good. Great. Well, thank you so much for very coming welcome. and cooking for us today. Very welcome. It very was welcome. fantastic. My pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Great.